Week one of our 48 Blitz preview show about to kick off. Welcome everyone into another awesome show. Tons to get to. We got one week under our belts. It's now week one games underway across our area tonight. We have a lot, as I just mentioned, to get to, including our game of the week. It's a rivalry matchup over in the River City uh, between Decatur and Austin. We also touch base on football returning to a historic venue in North Alabama for the first time in more than a decade. That's coming up. We have our first play of the week winner. We have our first player of the week, and we get you prepared for so much including a special feature, uh, another 48 Beyond the Lights, as we take you across North Alabama to check in on some of our most hallowed grounds. And I'm, what I mean by that is our stadiums uh, across North Alabama, some special, special places to watch football under the lights on Friday night. So as I mentioned, tons to get to, tons to cover as we get you prepared for Friday and another week of our 48 Blitz show along with our 48 Blitz OT show where we take you behind the scenes with coaches, players, and more importantly, scores from all across North Alabama. So without further ado, let's get right to it. 48 Blitz preview show runs out of the tunnel right now. Well, we start the show with our game of the week. And folks, it's a good one between Austin and Decatur. River City rivalry 2023. Last season, the Black Bears lost their game at home against their crosstown rival. This season, new batch of storylines, including a new head coach for the Red Raiders in Aaron Savage. You will hear from Coach Savage in moments, but we first start with the road team in Austin and their head coach, Jeremy Perkins. Perkins excited to play another rival to start the season. It's a good sign. I mean, uh, things weren't going well in the second half. Uh, we had lost momentum, and our defensively, we stepped up and made some plays to win the ball game. Now you guys turn your attention, of course, to Decatur, a big rivalry game there. What is so fun um, about playing in these rivalry games and, and such a historic one like Decatur? Well, I mean, these guys grew up with their guys. Uh, they know, they all know each other. We're in the same town, so it's going to be a great atmosphere too. So it's fun playing in these games and adds a little pressure, adds a little excitement. Yeah, and um, talk about kind of what Decatur brings and what you guys are kind of preparing for and what you'll have to come back come game day. Well, they've got a new coaching staff, so uh, we've got a lot of unfamiliarity uh, with them right now. Uh, they, they played one game, they won big, so they didn't have to show a whole lot. So we're looking for anything and everything right now, uh, kind of expecting the uh, gates to be open. And, and so we're trying to prepare for any kind of surprises, but uh, we expect a four-quarter hard-fought football game. Um, and talk about kind of what that, you talked about that atmosphere a little bit and, and what that means to come um, on, in those rivalry games. What is the atmosphere like at the Decatur um, Austin games and in, in the past that you've been to? Uh, just a lot more buzz around the air. I mean, the, the crowd's going to be a little bit more electric. It's going to be a bigger crowd than normal games. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of bragging rights. Uh, you know, and again, these guys know each other, so they grew up in the same town. So when you're playing your friends or people that you know is a little bit different than playing strangers. So it adds pressure. And of course, um, after these two games, what, how um, does playing these two big kind of rivalry games back to back set you guys up for region play? Well, hopefully it pre prepares us for that environment, prepares us for the stage, makes the lights a little less bright and the stage a little less uh, big and overwhelming. Um, and, and, you know, we get to learn from the ups and downs of the ball game, the pressure of the situations and the adversity we have to face. Um, and then your 14th season here, um, you've kind of been able to, you know, build your own brand of football. How could you put into words what is Black Bears football here? Well, we want to be physical, uh, extremely physical on both sides of the ball. We want to be uh, really sound in what we do. We want our kids to play extremely hard. We want to play with class and character. Um, and we, want, we want to do things the right way. And, and win the right way. Switching to the home team and Decatur, preparing to have historic Ogle Stadium rocking Friday night. Aaron Savage coaching in his first River City rivalry as just the third head coach in Decatur history in the last 33 years. Last week was, uh, it, it was really encouraging, right? It's, it's the first time that our kids had a chance to get out and, and play somebody different and, and see somebody different. And uh, you, you put that on top of playing at home in front of uh, our home crowd, in front of our student section, uh, is unbelievable. 
it's big for this community, right? So this is, is one thing that's gonna bring everybody in this community to one centralized location, to really have a good time and to see a good show, to see a good game. Uh, the thing that we talked about with our kids earlier this week is, you know, don't forget at the end of the day, the bottom line is we're out there to, to put a good product on the, on the field and, and play our very best brand of football and don't get caught up with the distractions, right? So rivalry week, man, brings a whole bunch of distractions. Uh, so our, our deal is to stay focused and, uh, and, and go out there and put a good product on the field. Well, I think when you talk about rivals, man, you can throw the records out the window, right? So it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a game of will of test, man. Who's going to outlast the opponent? Who's going to play the most disciplined ball? Who's going to be where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, and doing what they're supposed to do? So it'll be a good game. Man, it's going to be a fourth quarter game, just like their game was uh, last week. Again, right? So uh, Hartsville's a rival with, with Austin and with us as well. So. When you have rivals, man, you can throw the records out the window and it's a battle of will. But we've got a ton of coaches on our staff that, that have played in this game, that have played in some huge rivals. Uh, so we had those guys that are on our staff to come up and talk to the boys at the beginning of the week and just tell them, hey, man, this is what this game means, right? This is what it means to me. This is what it means to this community. And that, 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 that grows legs and it, it's been good for us. Man, I tell you, every game for us is a big game, right? We put so much work in from the spring to the summer, uh, summer camp and into the fall, and you only have 10 guaranteed opportunities. So they're all big. Hey, we had a play of the week winner for our week zero action, the Panthers of Mars Hill Bible, and this play against the Coleman Bearcats, it's Griffin Hansen to the air to his teammate Tanner Cottle, tip drill, great concentration, and the score. Mars Hill won the game, and the Panthers faithful had over 6,000 votes, winning our 48 blitz play of the week from week zero. We also had our first 48 Blitz player of the week, Lee High running back, Carlin Long ran wild in week zero. How about 354 yards rushing and five touchdowns en route to a general's ruin over at Westminster. Our 48 Blitz cameras went out to hand over his award to his coach, Irvin McGuire, and his teammates showing a little love as well at practice. We also had the chance to sit down and chat with Carlin about his first award of the season. Uh, first, I want to say, going into the game, I didn't think the game would turn out like that. Of course, I thought that we was going to play good, but like seeing how the lane, how open the lanes were, that's that's not something I was expecting because I I played. Now I'm not trying to say six A or anything, but I played in seven A and it was tough. Like just, I don't know. I was expecting something different. That's what I'm trying to say. And one of the linemen walked up to me and asked me, "They was like, so what are you seeing out there?" And I I told him, I was like. I don't know, because I'm just running the ball. I was just running the ball. I honestly don't know what I saw. I was just running the ball. Okay, uh, we just we just going with the motion and just practicing. But now it's like we want to practice. We actually want to practice. We want to get better. We're going 100% every every play. And coach is not really having to tell us to, okay, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Y'all need to like speed it up or, you know. I can tell that we actually want to win, that we actually want to play. Okay, finally tonight, folks, it's time to go Beyond the Lights with our 48 Blitz Beyond the Lights feature. This is where we show the true essence of high school football in and around the Valley each and every Thursday night. This week, we take you to some of the best stadiums across North Alabama. These venues, some of the most hallowed grounds across the Tennessee Valley, and we want to showcase those playgrounds under the lights on Friday night to you. We will see you next week for week two of our 48 Digital High School Football Show. Good night, everyone. It's a place that forces passion, emotion, Let's go! Let's go! the fabric of high school football Friday nights, what communities call home, therapy, a healing place, stadiums, all across North Alabama and the Tennessee Valley. These structures represent more than four plus quarters under the lights. In the shoals, Russellville High School boasts one of the newer state-of-the-art facilities. If you blink twice, you would think this venue belongs to a college football program. Instead, the stands are packed full of rabid Golden Tiger fans each and every Friday night. The Trojans of Muscle Shoals could also be characterized as a venue fit for a collegiate program. J.F. Moore Stadium, an indoor facility, home stands that are fit for a small college, and in the student section for the Trojans and J.F. Moore Stadium become a go-to on Fridays. For some stadiums, nostalgia rules of the day. Howard Chapel Stadium, home of the Destler Tigers. Chapel, who graduated from the University of Alabama with Bear Bryant as his teammate in the 1930s, players currently enter the playing field by running down the hill. 
a stable in Tuscumbia. Leading Alabama, home of Hall of Fame tight end Ozzie Newsome and home of C.T. Manley Stadium. 3,000 fans are sitting right on the field, rooting the Indians on to victory. Gunnersville Lake, 75 miles of water across North Alabama. Gunnersville High School's Atchorba Lee Stadium sits alongside Alabama's largest lake. The years of winners have helped this stadium celebrate numerous region championships and every other year home to the state's oldest rivalry between Gunnersville and Scottsboro. In 1963, Morgan County High School football boosters launched a drive to help build a stadium to be ready for the fall of 1964. Thus, J.P. Kane Stadium was built. A throwback of a stadium, from the lights to the old school track around the playing field, the Tigers faithful are proud of this amazing home field advantage. The first national championship for the Crimson Tide of Alabama under legendary coach Bear Bryant will always be synonymous with Scottsboro, Alabama. Scottsboro native Pat Trammell was the quarterback on that team in 1961. Trammell, a high school All-American, would later die of testicular cancer at the age of 28 in 1968. In 1971, Pat Trammell Stadium was built, a unique venue built in remembrance of an Alabama great. The Madison Bowl always brings rival high schools just five miles apart together to battle it out for the Madison Bowl. Bob Jones, James Clemens, Madison City School Stadium fit for a bitter rivalry each and every season. Ogle Stadium named after Red Raiders coach Shorty Ogle. In 1956, Ogle raised $100,000 to start the funding of the stadium. Today, Ogle Stadium continues the traditions as one of the most iconic places to watch a football game in North Alabama, especially when the River City rivalry is played between the Red Raiders and Austin High School. In April of 2011, the city of Albertville dealt with the tornadoes that damaged the community, and at that time, the brand new football stadium. But like any community in North Alabama filled with pride, the Aggies responded and rebuilt McCord Field, making it one of Alabama's best venues. If you visit Fort Payne High School in Wildcat Stadium, you will instantly fall in love with the team, fans, and the Lookout Mountains overlooking the playing field. It's truly one of the most breathtaking venues in and around the valley. Passion, emotion, but for communities across North Alabama, one word can describe any venue under the lights on a Friday night, home.